already formed a quorum. It is also time to start. So let's invite the team from the administration to join us. Today we'll still follow up on the insurance arrangements. The administration has provided some follow up papers for us to respond to the questions raised last time, but I don't know whether they have all been answered. In a moment we will talk to them. Um, have you come to an agreement? No. Uh, the discussion has been completed, but um, we haven't reached an agreement. If uh, it cannot be agreed, then let's just forget about it. Mr. Yun, good afternoon. When you are seated, uh, please start. Do you want to walk us through your paper, which is a follow-up to our questions? Mr. Chairman, I suggest that we divide the discussion into three parts. Uh, why don't you just cover the follow up to our previous questions. Mr. Chairman, in our reply, in addition to giving a reply to the questions raised last time, say for example, uh, the differences in the figures between ourselves and the Hong Kong Federation of Insurers. The other day they talked about a 90% figure and there's about um, that 90 out of 100 claims uh, sorry, 900 out of uh, 90 out of 100 uh, made use of the private healthcare insurance. Um, but for us, when we talk about the figure of 54 percent, what we meant was that, according to market survey, we asked people who have bought private health insurance uh, policies, and we have asked them. Uh, whether they have recently been admitted to hospital for operation. Uh, we want to know how many of them have pertained to public hospitals and how many private hospitals. Among all of them, in theory, all of them have been covered by private insurance. 54 still pertained to the public sector, while 46 percent uh, pertained to private hospitals. That's what we meant. So uh, we were trying to say that despite having a coverage, about half of them still pertain to the public uh, sector. Perhaps they found the coverage not adequate. So we are talking. We were talking about two different things. Mr. Chen, is what they are describing correct? Just the description. Yes, as they have said, we are talking about two different things. I don't want to say that they are accurate, but I don't. This is because I don't think they are accurate. Uh, I say that it's not accurate because I still do not agree with him. Um, we want to know about the sample size. For us, we covered um, tens of thousands of claims, but then for Mr. Yun, I think. Um, uh, his information was based on a survey. So how many were interviewed? 100, 1,000 or 10,000? That was the 2011 thematic household survey. Well, before we asked, uh, we, we represented the figures, we have already agreed with the Hong Kong FI. Paragraph 5, uh, please elaborate on this point. Mr. Chairman, for the figures that were presented, well, in fact, um, it's based on the thematic household survey conducted by the Census and Statistics Department. Of course, we aren't covering the whole population like a census, but then we do cover uh, tens of thousands of people according to a scientific 
um, method verified by the uh, department. So it's according to a household survey. Mr. Chairman, I asked for more detailed information. Over 10,000 households, I don't think that there are that many households getting insurance coverage. So please give in writing further information. It is said that the uh, Hong Kong FI agreed. I think they agreed to uh, covering the same topic, but I don't think they agreed uh, with you on the figures. I think uh, we know um, uh, what is uh, true. So for the thematic household survey, uh, please uh, give us more information, like the sample size, how many of them have got insurance coverage, etc. Now, according to your description here, for every 100 admissions, 54 pertain to public hospitals and 46 pertain to private hospitals. No overlapping? So is that that clear cut? Instead of having both, we are talking about admissions rather than the number of persons. So the, that's the point. So you aren't talking about 100 persons for 100 admissions. Say, for example, exactly, exactly, that's what I want to point out. Would it be the case that we've only got 54 heads for 100 admissions? Uh, uh, perhaps um, two operations were carried out, one in public, another one in private. You talk about having been admitted. Just in relation to admissions, you don't know what has been carried out during the stay at the hospital, no. Now you talk about for every 100 admissions, 54 pertain to public hospitals, 46 private hospitals. Would it be the case that among the 100 admissions, it, take it to the extreme, there were only 54 persons, 54 individuals. In other words, or maybe there were 46 of them have resorted to both sectors because it uh, spend it over a year's time. It's a long period. So the uh, individual uh, concerned might have already made use of his private health insurance. Yes, that could be possible. It is not as bad as only 46 used uh, the, the insurance. Maybe all 100% of them have used the uh, insurance policies, but they thought it was inadequate, so they went to the public hospital as well. In other words, maybe 80, 90% of them have used um, the benefits of their insurance policies. Maybe they have already reached the upper limit of the benefits, and so they went over to the public hospital. Indeed, Mr. Chairman. So we are simply t talking about the facts about the admissions as to how it should be uh, explained. I think it's this up to us to attribute a reason. Mr. Um, members, well, in order to make it more systematic, let's follow up on the items one by one alphabetically. And then uh, if um, we have got more than one member asking questions, then we'll start to impose a time limit. All right. I think there's ample time. You just raise your hand. For item A, let's uh, follow them up one by one. For item A, now it is said that for certain diagnostic imaging tests, you're suggesting that there should be a 30% coinsurance. My question last time was that uh, for existing policies, for such uh, diagnostic uh, imaging tests, if they go to hospitals to do it, they don't really have to pay that much. So your current proposal is even worse than the existing arrangement. Am I right? Mr. Chairman, it depends. It depends on the insurance coverage already acquired currently. Say, for example, you may have to pay $15,000 for hospital admission. It varies from one policy to another, and that's the complexity, and that's why I would like to standardize the requirements. Maybe the ceiling is $10,000, and so uh, he has to dip into his own pocket. It is not clear currently. It is not clear currently, then you must find out about the existing picture. You can't just make a wild guess. 
Well, I have had many patients who are under insurance coverage. You may say that the existing plans are not good, but for those who are admitted to a hospital, a diagnostic uh, test may uh, cost him seven thousand dollars. But then everything is being covered, so he hasn't uh, need to pay as much as thirty percent as you suggested. So you are offering something worse than the existing one. Currently, they don't have to pay that much. You're speechless. So in effect, you are admitting that I'm right. I think the concepts are different. How different? The objective reality is that we all know that we don't have to be admitted to a hospital for carrying out such a test. Currently, um, since they want to be fully covered, so we want to know whether he has to be made to stay in hospital for overnight, and it makes things so costly. Now, some of the plans do not cover them. In future, when they are covered, then in future, when they have to be tested, they don't have to be admitted for overnight stay, and then relatively speaking, it's cheaper. Currently, the consumer won't care because the insurance uh, uh, insurers ask them to stay overnight, and so they they stay overnight, so they don't have to pay anything, so they don't care about that. The reality is that. Your objective reality is that your proposal, under your proposal, he has to make a co-payment of thirty percent. Currently, they don't. True. Therefore, in future, we have to explain the matter clearly. Currently, for such a procedures, you don't have to go to hospital. Now you have to go to hospital, unless you're saying that your coverage is better elsewhere. Now, the plans you acquire now may not cover them, or if. Or if you want to do it, then you have to be admitted, and that will increase the cost. Private hospitals uh, do not have adequate beds because forty, fifty percent of the capacity has been devoted um, to the tests uh, of a, of this nature. Uh, when you have the detailed plan, uh, perhaps you can. Yes, we will explain. We understand the concern regarding people. Now, the average uh, premium of thirty-six hundred dollars. Now, Mr. Chen Kim Po said that thirty-six hundred dollars wouldn't work, so we suggested that you do the calculation and show us the math. Now, you seem to have given us more qualitative. Descriptions. You don't have a risk table. Now you have discussed with the insurance sector. Checking uh, Paul, we've met with the permanent secretary. Now here it says. Now the well, we understood the truth to be like this. The report uh, took a middle scenario. Actually, there's a range. That is minus eight percent to plus forty-eight percent. So it says thirty-six hundred dollars, but it can be as cheap as thirty-three seventy, or it can be as expensive as fifty-seven hundred. So, so it matches what I said on radio. It can be plus twenty, thirty percent, because. If you show the percentage, you don't feel the pain. Now, thirty-six hundred dollars might be fortunate. It might be eight percent less, three three seven zero, or it might be forty fifty percent more. And the insurance uh, and the consultant says it can be as much as fifty one hundred dollars. So you should uh, give us uh, in the report the dollar amount. Now, after discussion, now actually many things remain unclear. We can't confirm whether the assumptions are correct, and costs for different companies vary. So even if they tell the public that it could be three three seven zero to five one zero zero, the insurance sector cannot assure the public that this can be feasible. The PS, any explanation? Because I also have some questions. Do you have any response? Now, for such estimations, you're talking about the future, so it won't be 100% accurate. 
and we do not plan to regulate the charges by the insurance sector. So any estimate would come with a range. Now, objectively, we can compare the products in the market. Some are similar to what we are talking about, the standard minimum requirement. The only difference is that uh, they don't uh, accept those with uh, preconditions. Now, and we calculate the figures, and they are quite similar for similar protection. So we are more confident. Secondly, we have a we have done a market survey. We've asked the uh, interviewees if this is the price and this is the protection. Would they be interested? And about 70 percent of the respondents tell us if they uh, charge 30 hundred odd dollars for the basic coverage, they would be interested. So we think the figures uh, would be uh, quite reasonable. Of course, finally, it's for the market to decide. Now, Chen Kimpo, now what do you mean by minus 8 percent to four plus 45 percent? Now, you say the average. Now, you say you can't confirm, but you use the 3,600 figure. You accept the $3,600 as an average provisionally. They say 3600 but they expect that it might be 5100 I'm talking about the average. One is the average and one is the range, okay? Well, we can't accept the average either. You think 3600 is also wrong. Now, if you ask me personally, I think 5100 is more accurate. You think the government's proposal for you, you think you worked out the arithmetic, you need a premium of $5,100. Now, we've done the calculations, and we can't confirm whether they are right or wrong, but i only like to point out that in the consultant report, it says that it can be $5,100, but we can't confirm whether 5100 is accurate. But we think the true figure is close to the upper range. My gut feeling is that it would be the higher figure. Now, perhaps uh, I should respond to the PS. Now, he previously stressed that there are one or two items that the existing providers can do, but there are eight or ten that they haven't been providing. You want them to provide ten odd items that were previously not done, the ten major requirements, so-called. Uh, it's a lot of uncertainty. You can't keep adding the products just because we have been trying to improve our products. And you ask uh, people whether they are interested in buying if the price is uh, 3,600. Have you asked them what would they buy? Would they, what would be the response if it's $5,100? So you should be more cautious. Your view is understood. I'd like to confirm with you. Now you say you can't confirm the $3,600 figure. We can't. The sector, insurance sector cannot. You say that even the government figure shows that it can be up to $5,100. So I'd like to confirm with you. Here it says, the government says $3,600 is uh, about 90% it's uh, directly comparable with the figure of about 90% cited in the press release. And the actual figure could be minus 8 to plus 45%. And you say that the existing premium is about 2400 to $3,800? 3300 um, Perhaps I can show you the consultant report. You, you have shown us the consultant report? Have you... I don't think so. How can you not have done so? This is more recent information. We only got that in after meetings. Can you provide us with this? Yes, certainly. It's something recently discussed with them. You should also give that to other committee members, perhaps next time. 
Well, it seems that you are the one asking the questions. No, the others need to know too, Dr. Kokaki. No, I think the PS is not right. He should have shown us these important documents earlier. No, he, they are meeting the insurance sector through the secretariat. You should have circulated them, and now we have wasted time. We have to wait. Can we make a photocopy right away? But I've uh, drawn many lines. Later, give us a copy formally. Now, we discuss a lot with the HKFI. Uh, so if, me if members want to have information, we certainly provide them. Now, Mr. Chen said that we haven't produced them. We'll certainly provide them. If you have documents that are only provided to the insurers, then we get more suspicious. We are talking about whether you are conspiring with the insurance sector, and you now tell us you are providing some documents to them only. We haven't said that what we are doing, that we only provide them with the papers. Now, you haven't reached agreement with the insurance sector, so we ask you to provide the document, and then you, you are supposed to talk to them directly, and then you said that it's collusion. Now, we certainly provide the documents. The documents are uh, passed along to and fro all the time, so perhaps uh, we haven't provided everything up. Now, there have been many documents that are exchanged. Now, we are not interested in collusion, please rest assured, but transparency is needed. We are talking about this paragraph, and I think other members need to know. While we are waiting for the document, now I asked a question just now, which I earlier mentioned. Now the $3,600, now you say the market average is now uh, $3,300, so it's 9% higher. And you say that the market average is now $3,300. So so in some cases, it might be 2400 and in some cases, 4800 That's correct. So you can't just work out an average and say that it's 9 percent more. Now, you can be higher than the lowest premium in the market by, say, 40 percent, and you might be uh, higher than the better products by 9 percent. No, no. Perhaps I can explain it this way. Now, let's look at the market. On average, let's say the average is $3,300, and we use that figure. Then we, uh, uh, we look at our minimum requirements and the conditions, and we calculate that by, my, by the greatest uh, accuracy method is $3,600. Now, no, it may be actually be higher. So if we use the worst assumptions, then it can be as high as $5,100. Now, now, let me just confirm this, okay? Now, the insurance sector is saying that they cannot confirm the figure. So the committee, the subcommittee is in the middle. We want you to provide the detailed formula. Now, please uh, don't worry. Somebody will be able to understand. Now, uh, if the figure cannot be confirmed and you cannot supply the figures, then what are we to do? Let's try again. Let's try to show you the detailed calculations. Now, it's complicated, but we'll try. The actuarial science is complicated. Now, if you show all the figures, people will understand. Some people will be interested so that they would study it. 
and understand why Mr. Chen Kim Po says that he cannot confirm the figure. Is Mr. Xun that uh, some only a few companies cannot confirm the figure? Now each company uh, uses its own method to calculate. Now it has certain profit and risk uh, parameters of its own. So you cannot get a unified picture for the sector. Some companies did not include the preconditions, so what figure would they plug in? So we, so it's difficult for the sector to confirm whether this uh, number is right or wrong. Perhaps I ask the uh, actuarial scientists to come and uh, uh, and the consultants to come. Now the basic figures and the risk table uh, that you provide uh, with your consultant company, uh, and uh, you can show them to us, and then we can ask the insurance companies to come too, and you can t tell everybody how it's calculated, and then they can point out whether there are any mistakes, and the subcommittee is, in the, is the middleman. It's not just a question of you reaching agreement with them. Now, in the future, the premium might be raised, uh, and then people might suspect there be there could be collusion. So we want to be to have see greater transparency. Yes, to be followed up. High risk pool. How is the high risk pool calculated? The premium loading 200%. How that? How that? How? Uh, what it means? Any questions? Now, here you explain the operation of it. Now, there is a premium uh, by age, and for high risk. Well, the insurance company will decide if they want a premium loading of 30. 300 percent, they can uh, switch them to high uh, to the uh, high premium loading group. Uh, the uh, so the whole case is delivered to the uh, high risk pool. The seven two hundred dollars is uh, collected by the. Uh, government, the uh, administration work is done by the insurance company. So let's look at this in conjunction with E. Last time a member asked whether there will be an overall gain if we have this arrangement. That is, the insured uh, will pay for one third of it, and we would like to know whether the uh, the public will stand to gain. That is why the HRP uh, should be uh, sort of um, set up. Um, say, for example, in the case of the. Um, um, the government. If I go to the government hospital, I, the government will pay all the thirty-four thousand dollars, and then uh, with the HRP, it means that um, the administration can, the government can focus on the um, non-covered operations. Uh, on the face of it, you may think that it is um, something that the administration would stand to lose in all aspects, but in fact, it's not, members. Your response, please.
uh, you can always uh, come back here to ask questions in relation to this item. Now, items F and G. The estimated financial support required for the operation of the HRP. How do you arrive at the figure? We are still confirming the figures with the consultant, but then uh, we have also uh, suggested a figure um, to the insurance sector. Four point three billion dollars over twenty five years. Yes, that's that's why we would like to ask this question. I think last time there was this question. Uh, I think there was a certain uh, scaling down uh, in the beginning or previously. Uh, last time you said that um, it should be age limited. Yes, 40, 40 years old. And then after launching the scheme in the first year, everybody uh, should be guaranteed acceptance in respect of the high risk and then uh, there will be uh, you you only need to have the premium loading and later on uh, somebody who has high risk will no longer be accepted uh, that is uh, if you don't join in the first year then um, if you are above the age of 40 and you have high risk then you will no longer be accepted i think it was only proposed last time Yes, yes, it was only proposed in December. Uh, the previous uh, proposals weren't like that, except that you said that if you buy at an earlier age and you are not of high risk, then probably you pay a standard rate. When somebody ages with the onset of disease, he will become a person of high risk because of the early commencement of insurance. He doesn't have to pay the uh, premium loading. He only has to pay the standard rate. This is to attract the young to take out the insurance. For the, um, for the pre-existing conditions, you need to have a waiting period, and then the waiting period will last for three years so as to attract people to take it out early. And then you have come up with a uh, additional uh, proposal for those aged 40 or above. Uh, they have to take out the coverage in the first year of launching the scheme, otherwise they will not be accepted uh, a year later. This is to encourage them to subscribe early. Now that you have added this proposal, in other words, now, one year will be too short a period of time. Now, I'm, only, I'm 50 years old. In other words, as soon as this is launched, you ask me to make up my mind. The time available is too short. And then, by imposing such a restriction, of course, the administration will save a lot of money. You ask us to subscribe in the first year. There will certainly be people who don't take it out in the first year. In other words, the high risk pool will be smaller, covering the number of individuals uh, of a smaller size, and then the government can save more money. In the beginning, you may have decided to use $50 billion. Now you say that. Um, you will only put up uh, with $4.3 billion. Is it because you want to save a lot of money so that um, by reducing the number of people joining the HRP, you can make a lot of savings? No, Mr. Chairman. In the course of the discussion and when we discussed the matter with the insurance sector and bearing in mind our policies, yes, first of all, by having HRP, it means that high-risk individuals can also get coverage and they can also go to the private sector if necessary. To make it successful, you have to encourage people to take it out at a young age instead of waiting for the onset of disease. Um, so otherwise, it will escalate the cost. And certainly, if we are to do this, uh, we have to uh, find out about the uh, liability on the part of government in relation to the HRP. We believe that by pitching it at the year 40, and in fact, there are also a lot of concerns as to why public money is being used to support the HRP. So we want to strike a balance. So 25 years and then $4.3 billion would be about right. 
we pitch the threshold at 40 so as to put pressure on the young to take it out early. Otherwise, if you only wait until 50, then people would wait until 40, in their 40s, or, or even when they reach the age of 50 before they would take it out. So the bench, uh, the threshold of 40 means you now if you uh, make it at uh, the year of, um, of 30, they are too young, they haven't got the financial means. So um, we think that someone uh, who who has already got a job and who has already uh, raised a family would be interested to take it out. The HRP um, would need time to accumulate the resources so that when we start to get the claims, uh, the HRP uh, will be able to take it up. We want to get the figures, uh, say, for example, we want to uh, defer it to 50. Uh, we can we can provide the uh, figures, and that's about sensitivity. Maybe four point three billion dollars would not then be adequate. It may require nine billion dollars. Yes, that's about the sensitivity. Yes, if we are to defer it, I don't think it's, it's just a matter of cost. Um, it will change the mindset of people. They will think that they would want to wait for a longer time, and then there will be less um, resources gathered. So by having um, contributed for a few years only, then you start to claim. It's better if somebody um, starts to uh, take it out in the early 30s, and then by the age of 50, he starts to claim, then there would have been sufficient contribution. Mr. Chen Kim Po, I'm sure the administration must have some ideas behind the idea of pitching it at 40. Why not 45 or 55? I think maybe the administration would like to facilitate a consultant's calculation of the figures. 40, the age of 40. Now, at the age of 40, you have to buy your property, your children have to go to school. That's the time when you don't have money when you have the least money to take out insurance coverage. I'd like to look at all the uh, figures. Um, we, we, we have $50 billion. I just wonder whether we can sort of relax it instead of 40, say make it 45, 50, or even 55, so the people can plan for the future in a better way, in particular the high-risk uh, individuals. Mr. Chairman, I just want to add a word here whenever we talk about insurance, in particular medical insurance, we should encourage early subscription. This is because when you take it out at a younger age, relatively speaking, the premium will be lower. So in uh, item D, under item D, and we can sort of look at the um, figures, it is only $2,000 by way of the premium if you take it out at the age of 30, so it will be cheaper. And then insurance is quite unlike other products. The later your age, uh, when you have uh, changes in your health conditions, it will make it very difficult for you to take out insurance. So we want to use the system the mechanism to encourage more younger people to start um, contributing to the plan uh, is better for the individual, is better for the overall development of the insurance sector. If everybody uh, waits until they are near the age of 60 to start contribution, then uh, very soon they will start making claims and where do we get the money? HRP. There's still one outstanding issue. We all know that ultimately the government will bear the risk. The government will be underwriting it for the HRP. But then for individual consumers, they may not know that the government is taking care of the policy because they will get the statements from my insurance company when there is a claim. Um, they will do it through the insurer. So the insurer will carry out the administrative costs. Now the administrative costs will be pitched at 12.5%, covering the overheads, uh, commission, labor costs, etc. I don't think 12.5% is adequate because if you look at the reality of the market, if you look at the commission, whatnot, I think it is about 20 to 30% or more. Just imagine that taking uh, $3,000 as the um, 
uh, figure. Say, for example, a client will go to a hospital, and then um, uh, a colleague will go to the hospital uh, to fill up the uh, claim forms, etc. So. Um, 10% would only mean $300. Sometimes for individual based uh, plans, uh, the commission may be up to 20%. So unless you don't pay the intermediaries at all, 12.5% of the claims costs will not be adequate. It is an outstanding issue. So what you are now saying that the admin cost of 12.5% of HRP would not be adequate, grossly inadequate, unless you assume that there won't be any commission for for the intermediaries, because for this figure you cover the overhead costs as well. The insurers will be responsible for the administration. Yes, they say that 12.5% is inadequate, they want more. I think last time I also raised another question. Now, if somebody doesn't take it out at the age of 40 in the first year, then you're entitled to turn him away. Now, once you have imposed this additional uh, arrangement, then there will be this controversy. In the past, you didn't have this element. Say, for example, post age 40, somebody approaches you, and um, you may think that uh, the risk is four times as high. He won't argue with you. The insured won't argue with you. Because you you have promised that it will be uh, two hundred percent, so he won't argue with you whether it is many times more or a few times less. As long as there's guaranteed acceptance, then there won't be any arguments about the um, number of times that his risk is higher. With this additional requirement of forty, then high risk persons will not be accepted. And then there will be a controversy. Say, for example, you turn me away. I will tell you that my risk is not 300% uh, of the standard. It's only 2.5 times. Uh, how are you going to resolve this dispute? So how are you going to do the calculation about the risk and tell the policyholder that, uh, hey, you, your risk is four times, five times the standard? Now, the simple answer is people should buy the cover before 45, for 50 or 50. Now they can buy it in the market in right now. But you wouldn't have other insurances. Your minimum requirement is for the entire market. Now actually in the future it would all be the same, but the products that they sell, they must provide the minimum requirement. It must include the M ambulatory, the basic things. <clears throat> so if someone approaches the insurer and if he doesn't agree with the risk, if uh, say I'm hepatitis B, the insurance company says you are a high risk person, I increase the loading so it can be up to 200%. And when it's over 200%, he can change to us. Now, in the future, if he's over 40 and the insurance company assesses that it's 300% uh, 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 premium, then if he is willing to pay that, the insurance company will accept him. We are not saying that if you pay a premium higher than normal, then you go to high-risk pool. Now, there is an alternative. If you are in high risk pool, if you are within f under 40, if your risk is still under two, a premium loading of 200%, still the insurance company will take care of him. <coughs> Maybe the PS doesn't understand the chairman's question, but the chairman asked an appropriate question. Now, in the future, there will only be the expensive covers, uh, and there will be no cheap covers. So you would be concerned about the loading. As the chairman sa said, in the first year, the government will cover it all, so he doesn't worry about paying three times. 
Now, in the, in the future, the insurance company says that they will charge 300% loading. Now, I'm saying that there are cheaper covers. Why are they cheaper? For instance, uh, no assured renewals. So the person buys the cover, but uh, three years later, his policy will not be renewed. You haven't caught my question. Let's call the age limit the new proposal. <coughs> now, previously, whatever the age, he can come either either to the insurance company and pay 200% or 300% loading, or the government can be treated at the government. So uh, anyone can purchase the cover, even if he's 80, by paying 300% loading. Now, so whether the risk is uh, two-fold or three-fold or four-fold or 2.5-fold, it doesn't matter. He can still purchase the cover. Now, it's uh, just a argument. The argument may arise uh, only regarding is whether it's 200% or 300% premium. Now, the insured uh, pays that amount. Uh, so it, it's uh, just a matter of whether the insurance company provides the cover of the government. Now, once you have the age limit, then if someone didn't buy the insurance, the first cover in the first year because he didn't consider himself high risk, he's uh, 40 and when he approaches the insurance company the next year, the insurance company says, I don't accept you. And then he comes to the government and, and the government will not accept him because he's over 40. And the person says, I don't consider myself high risk. So previously there wouldn't such uh, a uh, controversy. Now, now I consider myself not a high risk person. I used to be healthy. <laughs> I can't work out my risk uh, as an insured person. Uh, I just pay whatever I can afford, and now you tell me, sorry, you are a high-risk person. So who decides? Who will decide as a middle man on whether I'm a high-risk person? The government has all the say. The government says uh, my f uh, f four, $4 billion is used up. Uh, everyone is high-risk. Now, if in the future there will still be more than one insurance companies there, you have uh, actuarials calculating the risk. If the companies feel that the risk is too high, uh, now sooner or later he will find one company who gives a true assessment of the risk. And he's uh, he's of high risk, and and that's a fact. You can't change it. He will still be of high risk. Wuchi Wai. Now, on this age limit, government seems to be thinking of something else. That is, in insurance, the main thing is that the earlier you buy the insurance, the better, so that the risk is shared by more people. And in the design, yes, we don't want people only buying insurance when they get old. Now, you should do something about that. But when you first talked about the document, you did not deal with the issue. And now you add the new proposal, and the government seems to be retreating. <coughs> if I remember correctly, we were talking about age limit 65, and then uh, we thought about it, and we considered the moral hazard. 
So uh, people might think they want to buy the insurance when they are four, six, 60. So, so what I'm trying to stress, let's look at it not from the perspective of money. We just want to encourage people to purchase the cover earlier. Well, it all has to do with money, hasn't it? Because it involves the amount of government funding. I agree. You must have two concepts. First, people must be willing to join the scheme earlier. Secondly, the coverage that must be maximized. But you seem to have dealt with certain things like uh, early joining, but on extending the coverage, even if it's not mandatory uh, health insurance, it would achieve the same effect. <coughs> the member is correct. If I s fix a limit of uh, the age limit at 40, say, then the government's burden would be a bit lower and you encourage people not to wait till 60 to take out cover. So now they take out cover at 35. So more people, many more people take out cover. And they begin to patronize private hospitals. Uh, let's use the age limit of 65. Then people will use the public hospitals prior to 80, prior to 65. And then, so that goes against our intention <coughs> that people will decide to use private hospitals. If they start purchasing cover at, in their 20s, then when they get older, they can make use of private hospitals when they get older. Now, one year might be too short. Uh, now, we can talk about that later. Chen Kim Po. Now, the PS said that if someone, because you don't, you no longer have a high risk pool, if uh, several insurance companies charge premium loading of uh, 300%, then you have only the, the choice of buy or not, because you no longer have the high risk pool. But no, right now, you say I only cover your existing conditions, so I can charge less. So, so if the person says, I want to have cover for the other ailments too, then, so he can buy the low coverage uh, cover. So you are uh, constraining the market. You should give the choice to the consumer. No. You are forcing people to follow the minimum requirement and you talk about moral hazard, but they, uh, I hope we see where the problem is. After, for, they, after they are 40, then uh, uh, some insurance company will say, okay, I charge you 200% loading, but uh, we don't uh, assure the preconditions. Now, now the insurance companies will only cover the lowest risk, so does it really help the insured? Now, of course, this is an, a more positive example, but if you allow that to happen, then the insurance companies will issue uh, many products, uh, but uh, it might be, even though it's cheaper, there is no guaranteed renewal, there is no MRI. Uh, now, if there's no uh, continued or permanent renewal, it's very dangerous. Now, a young person takes out the cover, several years later, he starts to get ill. There's no guaranteed renewal. So the next time the insurance company will not renew the cover or the loading may be increased, 
then that person will find it very, very difficult to take out cover. So we have to strike a balance now. Uh, now, right now in the market, same, there are many policies of uh, guaranteed renewals, oh, but on higher premium. So, so on permanent renewals, as you said, the new products are meeting the needs. So very few companies will refuse renew the next year. Provide. Uh, they only charge a higher premium. So they look at the portfolio. That's the same for many products. So you should enhance the education for consumers to, so that they understand how insurance operates. Now, if they understand it, then they can make an informed decision. They are not stupid. Now, of course, some people are more liable to make mistakes, so you should explain to them. Hong Kong people like to have a choice. The PS, to follow up on one thing. Now, can you have an arrangement like this? Now, if you have a minimum requirement, then, well, because of the age limit of 40, can you exclude that product for uh, those aged over 50, 40? No. No. Well, uh, if it's catastrophic illness, uh, uh, yes, that can be considered. Now, we don't want to let the companies to come up with products so, so that the insured uh, uh, lured into believing something else. Now, for instance, in electronic products, several years later, there will be newer and cheaper products. Say the minimum requirement uh, includes guaranteed renewal, but for those who are over 40, then there can be a condition that certain illnesses are not covered. So that, uh, because that's the illness that causes the premium to go up uh, 600 fold, 600 percent. So you uh, let's exclude that illness, and then the uh, the the there can be cover excluding that illness. We can certainly study the feasibility, Mr. Chairman. We'll try to see whether your proposal will work. Yes, uh, because of a particular condition, he may not be able to get coverage. So by accepting that condition, would it do, Mr. Sun? Of course, we're willing to carry out a study. However, if you allow uh, insurance companies to have exclusion terms, it won't be just for one off. Say, for example, I have problems with my liver and my heart, and I'm um, 45 years old. I'm willing to do so, but then at the age of 60, I have a claims history, and then my lungs are not good. Now the insurer may say that, yes, I can take you on, but then you, I'm not covered your lungs. Uh, we want to have a plan covering all conditions, so as to give certainty to the insured. If you allow the insurers to have exclusions, I'm afraid that the exclusions uh, will not just be one-off. You need to renew your plan every year. Uh, I think the chairman's point is that at least the person can get the coverage uh, once. Yes, sir. Off the cuff, I cannot think of all the implications. We'll study the matter. If it is reasonable, we'll reconsider it. Any further questions on this paper? If not, then we can move on. And that's about the regulatory framework as well as the dispute resolution mechanism. Uh, what about Appendix B? Uh, of course, uh, we have to touch on that earlier on, but um, can I refer to Annex B? 
I think the administration has already、um, talked about、uh, a matter of concern to us. That is、uh, whether we can only sell products meeting the minimum requirements, but we cannot have something cheaper. Yes, there is already an elaboration in Annex B. I'm not going to challenge it point by point. I'll leave it in the hands of the Hong Kong FI. They will challenge it point by point.、Uh, I don't want you to have the impression that they've already、uh, given the rationale explained to the matter, but in fact, it's not. And he also, they also. Uh, gave the example of Singapore. After all, it is an overseas example. I wait for a written reply. Basically, I just want to say that I cannot agree、uh, with the、um, explanation given in Annex B. Mr. Chairman, I do agree with what the member has said in this paper. This is to facilitate members' understanding. I would like to set out、um, the. Disagreement、uh, with the Hong Kong uh, FI. Uh, it doesn't mean that we have already reached a consensus with the Federation. We'll try our best to have a dialogue, and we hope that、uh, all the points can be set out in the consultation paper. Well,、uh, this is to make sure that、uh, we have an early. Have an idea earlier, so that you can start to think about the positioning earlier. If you want to come back to this paper when you think of a question, feel free to do so. Next, we will talk about the regulatory agency, as well as the dispute、uh, resolution mechanism. I think we can take both together. Anything to add? No, because、um, this was already、um, presented in the past. Anything new? No. We'll just continue with the、uh, discussion. Last time, I don't think members have got many questions. That's about the regulatory agency. Yes, I just hope that it won't become a huge organization wasting everybody's money like a white elephant. Yes, Mr. Chairman. That's why we said that we haven't got anything new for the future regulatory agency.、Um, after. The public have agreed、uh, to the broad direction、uh, in the consultation exercise. Then we will make final decisions on regulatory agency and the DRM. The paper was dated the 18th of February, but it seems that you haven't got anything new when compared with the previous versions. And what about your timetable? What I mean is that、uh, for the details, I want to know whether you're going to have a public consultation document. Uh, we hope to do so before the middle of this year or earlier. That is a proper consultation exercise, so that all the、um, concepts like minimum requirements, high risk pool, whatnot, all of them will be included in the consultation exercise, and then we'll come to a decision afterwards, middle of the year, May or June. We, we still have to come back to you on those outstanding issues. We would like to give you a detailed account so that members understand the basics before we move on to consultation. So once there is a consensus on the、uh, approach, then you will move on to the regulatory agency and the CDRM. Because that's ancillary. If there is no consensus on the on the Core elements is meaningless to move on to others. Yes, we have talked about the principles of the regulatory framework, but we do have to wait for the、uh, completion of the consultation exercise. Members, for the two papers, or for these two areas, I think in the past you didn't ask much, much, because it seems that there will be a fun. There will be sort of、um, be something in the distance. Any questions? Raise your hands if you have questions. If not, I would like to ask this question. In the past, many people 
uh, rejected um, this idea of HPS, thinking that uh, you would sort of uh, pouch the manpower from the public healthcare sector. Now, I think the other day, a Hong Kong U professor came to brief us, but we haven't got any detailed figures. Probably you will have some draft figures with you. Uh, when can we get a sight of that? Uh, we are still talking to the university consultants. I understand that you want to understand better about the models, like the assumptions and the figures um, 10 years down the road. I uh, would like to get more information from them. They are still developing the model. They are still making, doing the calculations. So it's not final. So that's the tricky point. They, they may still be subject to final adjustments. I just want to, uh, I, I, I would try to find out what can be done to brief you on the concepts as well as the major assumptions. I hope to come back to you ASAP. Well, for the calculations, somehow you're bound to be able to have some uh, sort of um, hypothetical cases. I, I'm, I don't understand you, Chair. Well, I think you can. Uh, have some illustrative calculations and tell us about the changes to the manpower level. Um, for the time being, we have no idea at all. I think last time you only gave us something very superficial. It is only qualitative, not quantitative. So where do you put the calculation signs? Is it a plus and minus or what? And with no idea as to how the data are to be put together. You haven't convinced us that there will be adequate manpower. You have yet to convince us that by launching the HPS, you won't be draining the manpower from the public health care sector. So it's better for you to come back early on this point. Based on your existing model, please give us some ideas. Is that possible? Mr. Chairman, I do understand your request. Uh, just let me go back to talk to them to see if I can find a way to provide more information to you. The problem is that if at this stage, um, if he, if they are to run the model and then the figures may be comprehensible to you for the purpose of testing the model. But once this is um, presented in the public domain, people would take them to be the final figures. I can appreciate your point, but I'll try to see if they can sort of test run the model and try to come up with something that's not relevant to today, that's not closely related to reality. Otherwise, there will be misunderstanding that we are really talking talking about the current position. I think we have to wait until they find the model mature and they are confident. Now, if we have a test run and if there is uh, a sh huge shortage of, man uh, of manpower like doctors, then the public will think that that's already the final picture. I try to find a way. I try to find a way so that it won't be misunderstood as the existing figures. Well, we have already assumed that there is a lack of manpower. <laughs> it's a, a matter of magnitude. Whether it's 300, 600, 700 doctors short, the figures will certainly go out uh, to the public domain. Well. If you don't give it to us in advance, that's my difficulty. Don't say that this is your difficulty. There's another difficulty. <laughs> you present the figures. You may not be telling us as to how you arrive at the figures. In the past, the government has not told us about the basis of the calculation. 
So after all, at the end of the day, we will have all our own interpretation, and there will be disputes. Now, Peter Jones would always tell you that you are wrong with your calculation, and you don't have the manpower needed. And I will always accuse you of having excess of manpower. So it's better for you to present the figures to us. Well, we know that they are just for test run. They are initial figures. What is important is that both myself and Peter Jen would like to know how you arrive at the figures. We want to know about the methodology. The, fun, the figures derived may not be important at this stage. Once we know about the methodology, then that means that we can tell you what we think. Say, for example, what factors you have omitted. And then. After we have given you our ideas, our comments,、uh, and given that we understand the model, then it will be easier for us to accept your final figures. If you think that certain figures should not be given to the public, it is too early. You can tell the subcommittee. I am sure we can handle it in a appropriate manner. You can call it a sample. You can call it a mock trial. Even if、uh, the public have got hold of it, they understand that it is just a test run. I will talk to the consultants. They are worried that、uh, people would regard them as the、uh, real figures, and then they are too worried about the shortage of doctors. Now, if you make things so complicated, and you only allow us a short period of time to analyze the final figures. It will be very difficult if you give me some figures. I may have to spend a week or two before I can、uh, make an analysis. I'm sure everybody would agree that what is important is that we want to know how the equations have been set up. And now the administration would tell us that、uh, the government has this. Assumption about the number of、uh, doctors needed, then, then we can understand how how you developed your formula. Members, any other follow up questions? Any outstanding issues other than the question about manpower? It seems that it seems that the government has explained almost everything about the HPS. And for the subcommittee, probably we may have to suspend our work for a period of time.、Uh, we can only work till the eleventh of March, and then we will be listed on the waiting list as other subcommittees are in the queue. So we can have we may have to wait till after the first of April. So、uh, it might be just a symbolic arrangement. So we are most concerned about manpower. Most of the other things we have discussed, whether we agree with them or not, the government has provided detailed explanation. So we don't have to take the meeting till 4:30. Any other matters, Chen Kimpo? The mediation. Now, previously, people, our members, haven't asked much about that. Do you have anything to ask about that? I'd just like to express my views. Now we feel that mediation is suitable for disputes of larger amounts, but for small amounts, it's not suitable. And we think that the RCCP or the uh, uh, hasn't has been very satisfactory. Now.、Uh, They've been very successful. Most of the cases were resolved, and the compensation paid were 50 million odd dollars. Now you have to、uh, to pay、uh, 200 odd dollars, and、uh, if it's a hundred thousand dollars, you have to pay one thousand more. So it's fifty hundred dollars. So and if it doesn't work out, it might have to go to arbitration. So. Uh, we think the、uh, so the ICCP is a successful mechanism,、uh, 
and there's also the uh, Financial Dispute Resolution Center, and uh, we know that hasn't received much patronage. Uh, so don't just uh, let them take this over because they are not busy. So uh, uh, I think uh, the, uh, the CP is uh, free. Uh, so and uh, so the mediation is uh, about the claimant between the, uh, the about the dispute between the claimant and insurance company. And uh, you say that uh, you do not deal with the dispute between the dispute company and the service provider. Okay. Okay, we end the meeting at this point. Thank you.